Hello, I'm Sam, and in this video we'll be talking about the electrostatics uh, that come as a part of electromagnet nodes. So once you add the assets uh, to your asset library, uh, if you go under um, electrostatics, you'll see all these nodes available to you. Uh, the advanced uh, nodes are the capacitance solver. This is only available in the pro version of electromagnet node. So the nodes that are available to you are the um, arrow grid, arrow volume, E-field line, plane, point, and uh, voltage point. Uh, very similar to those in the, magneto in the uh, magnetostatics nodes. So if we um, start by with the arrow grid, for example, so I'm going to erase everything in my scene and just drag and drop this um, here. Now, with electrostatics, you need to be very careful about how to use them, especially with the free version. Um, and that is because the way the, the solver works is that it needs to know what is the surface charge density uh, in the object. And so in the free version, um, you, you can assume, I've assumed that there is a uniform surface charge across the object. Now, this assumption is not very accurate. It, it, it is perhaps only good for sphere, spheres where the surface charge will distribute uniformly um, around uh, all, all over the surface. But once you start to have um, edges and angles, then that assumption is, is uh, no longer correct. Also, if you have multiple objects um, uh, that you're trying to study, again, the surface charge density will not be um, uniform. So just keep that in mind um, if you are using the free version. We'll talk about the pro version and how you you can uh, uh, calculate the surface charge density uh, if you have the pro version. So in this scene that uh, we have at the moment uh, with the arrow grid, uh, it comes with uh, two objects in our scene, one called the icosphere and one is the arrow grid. The icosphere is the object that we uh, would like to study at the moment, as you can see, it contains two spheres. Uh, it's a mesh, so with um, electrostatics, um, it requires a subdivided mesh to operate. Uh, in other words, you need many faces in, in, in your mesh, uh, and the more faces you have, the more accurate the result is at the expense of speed, of course. So if I just select this object, then I, and if I move it around, you can see how the arrows change accordingly. Um, with um, electrostatics, um, you can you can use uh, vertex groups to specify the charge polarity and the charge density. So, uh, for example, right now in this scene, uh, this object is positively charged, and on the right is negatively charged. So, uh, if I want to make both of them positively charged, I can go to edit mode and I can select. Uh, all uh, this entire object by pressing L and bringing the end panel. And if you notice that um, you can see the vertex group specified here, charge polarity and charge density. Now at the moment I've used a value of zero to, uh, to indicate that it's a negatively charged and a value of one, meaning it's a positively charged. So if we select the left object, it will see that it's one and on the right object is zero. So if I make this value one, and you'll see have to the field uh, arrows, you can see now they're all pointing away from each other and you've got uh, almost no field here. So this is how you can uh, change the polarity and this applies for all the these other nodes. And the other parameter is uh, charge density. This value ranges from zero to one. Um, so uh, right now for both objects, I've got a value of 0.5, oh, it says 0 0.55, 0 0.5, so meaning that they have equal charge. Now, if I want to have more charge on the object on the right, so I want to have twice the charge compared to the first object, I can select the first object and just make it one. And now this has more charge than the object on the left. So uh, if I now, reduce the charge on the object on the left to zero, so it's, it's no charge at all. You can see that now this basically behaves as if there is only one one sphere in the scene. So this is how you can control the, uh, uh, the polarity and the charge density in your scene. 
we have a look at the options for the arrow grid in the modifier panel, you've got uh, the first option is a target uh, mesh that you want to look at the electric fields and now we're targeting the arcospheres and then you've got uh, a big warning saying assuming uniform charge density and this is just to remind you that uh, with this uh, node it only assumes that the surface charge density is uniform uh, which is as I mentioned at the beginning is not accurate uh, and then you've got uh, size x and y you can decrease the size and, and, and change the size uh, how you want and we've got the resolution number of vertices basically in the x and y direction and the scale of the the arrows okay so if we have a look at what other what uh, other nodes are available to us so if we select everything and delete and then if you just drag and drop the e-field plane for example you'll notice this is the e-field plane and because my preferences are set to reuse data it's using the previous uh, uh, data for the icosphere, and that's why we don't see any field uh, shown on for this sphere. So let's uh, change that. Let's set this um, sphere to have a charge of 0.5, and let's go to our this sphere on the right and make it also 0.5. And you see now because they have the same charge polarity, they're both positive. This is how the field looks like. It looks like it's white is indicating that it's very strong and light blue, it's like very weak. And as you would expect that you would have almost no field in the center for this arrangement. So if we make this sphere negative, and then this is how it looks like. And also you have a very sim a similar set of uh, options to control the field plane. And the next node we'll have a look at is the field lines, which is my favorite uh, node to, to work with. Uh, and to basically, it's, just, it's very similar to the magnetostatics uh, field line. You simply uh, place the field at the position that you want it to start at. And then as it moves along, it will calculate its, uh, the rotation and how it curves uh, depending on the field. So um, Again, and the parameters you have, uh, you can only control the length of it. So if I can move it a little bit more, and then I can bring this one here and integrate this one here, have one here, maybe just shorten the length a little bit. And you can easily create uh, field lines. Now, if the object is negatively charged, uh, you will have to place the 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 arrow further away for it then to move towards the the charge as it gets uh, stronger near the surface. Add more here and more here, and then let's also come add a few more more here. Very fun to to work with, and these are the field lines. And then if we make this object positively charged by making it one. Uh, let's see what happens to the field lines. You can see they start to move away, change direction. So then we can bring it closer, bring all of these closer. Around, bring them closer like that. So you can have fun with it and uh, would be for the field lines and arrange them however you want. Next notes that we'll have a look at is the E field point and voltage. So let's drag this into our scene and Essentially, this tells you what is the field, uh, the value of the field, the, at any point in space and direction, as in, in as indicated by the arrow. Uh, and you've also got similar set of parameters in the modifier panel to configure and change. You can change units from meters to centimeters. Uh, you can enable arrow scaling or not. Show e field values and the size of of the the arrows. Now, this value is uh, based on the assumption that we have one microcoulomb of, uh, per square meter uh, of charge that is distrib distributed um, on these two objects. So we can change that by going to the geometry node editor for the E field point. And you'll notice that there is a big warning saying assuming uniform charge density, just to remind you again about this. And uh, you can come here and 
change the value uh, of the charge uh, density. So it's always by default, it's set to one microcoulomb per square meter. And also if we have a look at the voltage uh, point, so if we uh, add in the voltage point uh, and it only gives us one, one sphere and essentially because this is a scalar value, um, uh, it's it's shown as uh, basically a big dot or a sphere, and this gives us the voltage anywhere in the scene. And so now might be a good uh, opportunity to actually uh, examine uh, how accurate these uh, calculations are uh, compared to uh, theory. So to do that, let's uh, erase just the spheres and let's just hide our in our voltage probes uh, and the and the e field probe and um, let's add in a a an ico uh, a a sphere uv sphere now if you bring to the end panel the sphere has a radius of one meter and we know from theory as you can see in this uh, image now shown uh, that uh, the we 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 can calculate the E field and the voltage at uh, on on the surface. Now remember, with electromagnetic nodes, the it's based on the assumption that we have only a surface charge. Uh, so in other words, the object are there's no charge inside the object. It's uh, there's no material inside uh, the 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 object, and so therefore we will we'll assume that all the objects are conductors. So if we bring in back our, back, let's give this a material. Let's give it, uh, I think it was target, yes. And let's set shade to smooth. And so let's bring in back our, uh, let's try our voltage point. So let's bring in our voltage point and let's make sure we are, we are targeting this, uh, this sphere. So we know from theory that at, on the surface, so on, on, uh, if we, set the position of voltage point on one, zero, zero, that we should get about 110 ki kilovolts uh, for this uh, object, assuming we have one micro coulomb per square meter of charge density. And you see it is uh, almost correct. So um, so that's, that's the voltage. And let's now have a look at the E field. So let's hide in the voltage. And let's do the same thing. Let's make sure we're targeting. Oh, just before I forget. So also from theory that we know that voltage inside uh, a conductor will always be constant. So as you move away, the voltage decreases, as, as you can see now. But then as I go inside, the voltage remains constant. Uh, and so this is what's happening. You can see that the voltage doesn't change inside, which agrees with the theory. And then as I, as I leave the, the object, the voltage starts to, to decrease. So uh, now let's have. So now um, let's have a look at the E field. So select, make sure I select in the E field. Let's target our sphere and let's do the same thing. Let's place this uh, directly on the surface. And you can see now, uh, well, that's a, a different value from the theory. We should expect about 110 kilovolts per meter, but we're getting 61. So why is that? Well, that. Uh, uh, it depends, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, on the mesh, uh, the number of faces you have in your mesh. So it looks like we haven't got enough faces. And this becomes very important if you're trying to determine the E-field when you're very close to, to the object. If you are very far away, then you're, you're, you should be able to get good accuracy with a low number of faces. But then as you get closer, you need more and more faces. So let's try to add more faces to this object. Let's view the wireframe. And uh, to do that, let's uh, use the subdivision modifier. So you can press Control One. You can see now we have uh, 75 uh, kilovolts per meter, so it's going up. Let's turn off optimal display, so we can see adding more faces and more faces and uh, and even more faces. So now we are getting closer to the theoretical value of the E field. And also for E field is uh, we know that as we go inside a conductor the E field should be zero. Uh, and so let's see, and you see now it Im immediately goes zero, it uh, vanishes. So as this agrees with the theory um, for, for, for this. So that's the E field uh, and the voltage uh, point nodes. 
Now, very similar to the magnetostatics uh, nodes, the, the data that's actually being displayed here for both the planes and the arrows is based on the normalized E field. So I calculate the E field magnitude and then I normalize everything else to the peak such that the maximum value always has is equal to one. In fact, if you go to spreadsheet uh, viewer and you'll see that uh, you've got, you do have the E field magnitude uh, available and then you've got the normalized value. At the moment, you're not able, there's no way of exporting this data possibly in the future version we might be able to do that uh, but now this is where you can find the absolute values for the e-field for for not this just this node but for the rest of the nodes as well and of course if you do want to change the colors uh, and the shader you can do that by going to the shader editor and if we, for the e-field plane this looks sort of similar to the magnetostatics case um, uh, I'm I'm using the E-field normalized values, so I know my values range from 0 to 1, which will make things easier moving forward. And then that goes into a color ramp, into a map range node. And I'm using, I'm also using a black body again here, uh, but then I'm using the hue value to change, uh, to change the colors to make it look more blue, which is what's, the, what's uh, typically used to represent um, electric fields. So if I mute this value, we're back to... Uh, black, uh, uh, typical black body uh, colors, um, or if you want, you can have your own colors by you know, by using a color ramp here. So if I can, I can add my own colors, and uh, I can also change the uh, emission strength as well. I can do that, and I've got an alpha uh, color ramp here. So my all the values that are very very small, close to zero, can have an alpha value for them. So that's uh, uh, how you can control a shader. And if you want, uh, if you do want the e field magnitude values, you can do that as well by changing these nodes. One thing to note that uh, for your settings, uh, if you're using EV, just make sure you have um, a, a screen space reflections turned on and refractions, so you, you get you get much better results for that. And also make sure blend mode is set to alpha blend.